Two other important properties of subsets of Rn are those of connectedness and con convexity. And uh, for the ordinary real line, these two concepts are actually the same thing. But for higher dimensional Euclidean spaces, there's an important distinction between these two. So we'll review a little bit about the definitions of each of them and how they're the same for ordinary real numbers and how they're very different for um, higher dimensions. So first, we recall the definition, um, the topological definition of what it means for a subset of Rn uh, to be connected. And this will be exactly the same definition that we may have seen for subsets of R1. So a subset E in Rn is disconnected if and only if there exist open subsets U and V in E. Now remember, this definition is slightly different than what it means to have an open subset of Rn. And a subset of E is open if and only if there exists an open set in Rn such that when you intersect it with E, it equals that open subset. So there's a slight difference, um, and it's important to know the, that slight difference. So it's disconnected if and only if there exists such open subsets, uh, satisfying the two conditions that, first, they are disjoint, so this means that they have no common intersection. And second, that their union is equal to E. In fact, there are many equivalent definitions of what it means for a subset to be disconnected. Uh, one, for instance, in terms of separations. But it's not necessary to know all of them for now. This one is the one that we'll use. Um, otherwise, if no such open subsets exist, E is connected. And we have an important theorem in one dimension that states a subset E of R1, of just the real numbers, is connected if and only if for any two points x and y and e, I can draw the straight line between x and y, and that's also contained in my subset e. So in other words, the interval, well, the interval, um, and let's say x is less than uh, or, yeah, is less than or equal to y, then the open interval is contained in e. So this is another criteria for what it means to be an open, for what it means to be connected subset of R. And, um, however, in higher dimensions, we can use this criteria for another potential definition. And instead of calling it connected, we're going to use the definition convex because we'll see that there's a slight difference. So a subset. let's call it C for convex, in Rn is convex if and only if for any two points, let's say two distinct points just so that we're totally clear. I should have also said that here. For any two distinct points, x and y in C, the line so the set of all points of the form um, 1 minus t times x plus t times y is contained in C for all t between 0 and 1, including its endpoints. So again, you imagine this as subset is convex if and only if for any two, of its, any two distinct elements, I can connect them with a straight line between those two points. 
That's what it means for a subset to be convex. And you can sort of imagine that, you know, something for something to be connected, you know, as long as I can go from any two points, no matter how I try, um, that's maybe a better definition of what it means to be connected. And we'll discuss this uh, later. But for now, let's focus on these two definitions. So we'll give an example of a very important convex subset of Rn. And this is called the n simplex, or more specifically, the n minus 1 simplex. So the n minus 1 simplex is denoted by a delta to the n minus 1. And this is the set of all points p1 up to pn in Rn satisfying a very special and important constraint. And this constraint says that each of the pi's are at least 0. And, so let me write this for all i, and the sum of the pi's is equal to 1. Now you might say, well, this sounds a little bit like probability theory. And in fact, it is. Uh, any finite probability space is exactly modeled by such a um, by such a set by this simplex. So the n minus one simplex, which is defined by this, is convex. This is an example of a convex set, and you should check this condition to make sure that it's true. For any two points satisfying these conditions, I should be able to look at the set of all of these points, and these points as well should satisfy this condition for all t. It's just an algebraic manipulation to check that this is in fact true. I leave that to you as an exercise. So just as it's important to know um, some examples, maybe we can have a theorem that gives us a couple of more interesting examples. Every convex subset of Rn is connected. And from this picture, you can sort of imagine that this, yes, of course, this something like this should be true. But again, we'll prove this more rigorously uh, when we introduce the notion of path connect connecting this later. Um, so every convex subset of Rn is connected, proof postponed. But before we uh, move on, Let's consider the converse statement. Is every connected subset of Rn also convex? And we know immediately several examples. Almost anything you draw will work, uh, really, as long as you don't lift your pen off the paper. Um, so uh, an example that uh, invalidates the converse statement is the unit circle, for instance. So S1 which is a set of all points x, y in R2, such that x squared plus y squared equals 1. So this just looks like a unit circle. And it's not convex because if I take any two points, like let's say here and here, and I draw the straight line between them, well, that line doesn't lie on the unit circle at all. However, it is connected, and again, we'll prove this much more generally when we show how if you have a subset of Rn for which if you take any two points, there's not necessarily a straight line, but it, perhaps a, uh, uh, an arbitrary path from those two points. If you can always find such a path, we'll show that the set is, in fact, connected. But it's good to have this simple reminder that um, in one dimension, these two notions are precisely the same because of this theorem. But in higher dimensions, there are a lot more subtle examples that show that these two concepts are in fact different. 